Okay, so I'll go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Um, my name is Alan Powell. I am very hopeful that you get something out of this, and I want this to be an interactive conversation. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to share a little bit more about the class that I'm going to be teaching in the fall. And then um, I'm going to give like a mini lesson, which hopefully will be a little bit applicable and fun, and then open it up for questions and answers uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know. Um, first of all, just to get to know you all a little bit, um, I, I know, Gordy, you're signed up for the class. Uh, Janelle and Jessica, how about you all? Had, had you signed up? Or are you curious? Or where, where do you stand right now? If you don't mind me asking to get to know my audience a little bit. Curious. Probably for next year, though. I'm sorry, say it again. You're looking at next year? Yeah. Our schedule's full for this year, but um, okay. I'm hopeful for next year. Okay, awesome. Jessica? He's considering taking it. There's okay. a couple we're trying to decide between. <laughs> so. Okay, no, it sounds good. And how old is your son? I'm 13. 13, okay, yeah. good deal. I, I just asked, I don't know if you heard, but had you all signed up for the class? You're curious about it or what's your... what? How are things looking? Um, we've already signed up for the class. Okay, fantastic. Well, I hope not to disappoint too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you won't. I, <laughs> it'll be fun. It's. I, I think overall it will be, and we'll um, hopefully everybody will get something out of this class today. Um, great. So to start off with, let me just share my screen, and I'll go over. Um, I'll, well, and I'll, I'll talk through it a little bit, just a little bit of background about me and then about the class and what my objectives and ideas are uh, to make this something that's useful for everyone. Um, as I've written in my bio or my introduction to myself, uh, for you all, I am a foreign service officer and my family and I have lived all over the world. I love geography. I TA'd for geography when I was in college. Um, I love being out in the world. And that's the best part is to, to learn it and then go do something with it. And that's one of the big things about this class, kind of four parts. Um, I'm breaking down the world into seven regions. I need to finalize the syllabus. I apologize. I am not a, a teacher, so I'm putting this together, but I promise that I do have things ready to, I will have things ready to go and we'll make it, um, I'll keep things in order for you. But uh, seven units that we'll do across the entire year in during these seven units, um, we're going to talk about a region each time. Within each region, I'm breaking it down into four parts. Uh, the first part is the physical geography. So we'll talk about the, the different aspects of the earth that we have um, to look at. So I was just looking at some pictures I have of flying over in South America, saw a river curving through it's part of the Amazon, like a high tributary in the Amazon. And then um, in America, oftentimes you'll see like a town in one of the, the oxbows or near the river. But actually in this photo, the population center where the people live is really removed. And if you think about it, it's because of the flooding. And those are the type of things that I want to help people see is that when you see the world around you, how do you understand it? What is it that you can... Um, understand better by understanding that, hey, every year in the Amazon, there's floods. Or looking across um, in India, there are, actually, that's another thing is the monsoons, but connecting that also to the monsoons we have in the Western United States. Uh, we live in Colorado right now, and it's starting to be North American monsoon season, which is the winds and how they work. So we'll talk about some of those. The weather is one of the things, but also the physical Features of the Earth. We'll talk about the hu the human geography of uh, the countries in the regions as we go through them. And I'm going to ask the students to explore a bit to find out what are some things that interest them or what are they curious about in that area. Um, we will take a journaling approach to the things that they learn through each of the units, um, and that's what I'll ask for back from the. Uh, the students in the class is for them to give me some information about what they've learned. And then we'll dive deep during the class a little bit, or we'll dive in more to those things and connect the pieces that we're learning together during the class. So again, um, the first unit will be geography. The, the first part of each unit will be geography. 
the second will be um, religion. So, and this is something where I want to make sure everybody's clear. I'm not here to go in one direction or another with anything. I'm going to help the students learn the basic tenets, the basic ideas and beliefs of the major religions in the, the regions as we study them. Um, this will be something where we are going to look at what make what does Islam mean? Who what is a Muslim? Um, and what does that mean to them? The, the next unit after the religions that we'll talk about is the culture in the area. And I'm going to give a little brief culture class uh, today regarding time, but there are basically 10 dimensions of culture that we'll talk about um, and highlight some of the elements in each of the regions that we go through. This is one of the funnest parts for me um, to understand how to get along with other people, how to talk to them how to give them a little grace and how to ask for a little bit of grace back when we're interacting with people from other uh, backgrounds. We'll also connect the geography and the development of the different places and how that impacts the cultures that have developed in different parts of the world. And then finally, and this is one of my, again, the culture and the, the, eth the is one of my favorite parts, but really the fun part in this class is the ethnographic unit. And what we'll do for that, the, the last class for each region is going to be an, an experiential um, opportunity. I'm going to ask the students between the culture class and the ethnographic, the ethnography class. That means going out and taking on the perspective of the person. So instead of looking out and seeing someone, it's to turn and look from their perspective of how they see the world. Um, and this can be something as simple as going and getting some food from a different cuisine that you don't know or making it yourself at home. And why is it that Hawaiians like poi? Um, that's something I've already always had a hard time with, but it's because it's got all sorts of fiber and things. And it's, it's a cultural um, as it's a cultural part of their lives. But there, there are different reasons and different ways we can talk to people and interact with them to understand where they're coming from. I'll have the students perhaps one thing that we could do is, or the individual students can do is go to a Hindu temple or a shrine and see what it is that these people believe in. We'll equip ourselves in the first three classes to understand. And the, for the fourth class is actually have an experience with the people that will be um, sharing with one another in class. And then the other thing I've uh, started to arrange and uh, we'll do is have a class in the last class, the fourth class of each section, um, is to have one of my friends from each of the regions, one at a time, uh, to interview them and talk to them with the questions that the students have to understand more deeply how the people from this other part of the world understand and interact with the world they live in. So, um, as I mentioned, journaling is going to be one of the, or notebooking is going to be one of the things I ask the students to do. Uh, I will have some assignments, things like in the South Asia section is to watch the movie Gandhi. Um, I think that's pretty age appropriate um, for it's a PG rating. Um, that's something that we'll go over about how the South Asian culture is very flexible culture. Uh, during that movie also we'll see some of the weather um, patterns and the physical features of the land and how it impacts uh, things, how human geography and the borders particularly the imposed border that the British impo uh, put between the, the Muslims and the Hindus in Pakistan and India, things like that we'll talk about. I'm not, I'm saying a lot right now, I promise. I will keep it at a very consumable level uh, when we go through it. I'm trying to, I'm thinking through a lot of things in five minutes here, but uh, that is the type of, uh, discussion I'd like to have. And I can talk about it, but really the important thing is for everyone to talk about it together and to learn something from it. Any questions about the, the basic parts of the class before we start into the other? Are we carry on? Okay. Um, this is, like I said, this is my first time doing a class like this. So uh, I'm going to share and give you what I've got, but also I will take the time to work with individuals and I welcome feedback um, on how to improve and how to make sure I'm keeping things at the right level for everyone, okay? One other point that I wanna make, uh, we had tried and we're looking at the way, my wife is very much into the well-educated heart and the rotations. 
to make this family friendly for the people that are doing a well-educated heart. Um, libraries of hope, uh, rotations with the different locations. It doesn't match up perfectly. Uh, Marlene is going through kind of by theme and somewhat by country, but this class is more focused on regions. So it's a little bit bigger. And also I'm looking a little bit further back in history, given the religious aspects. If you look at Hinduism, these other religions that have been around for thousands of years and generally Marlene stuff for the rotation um, tends to be more towards the liberty and, and things in the United States, which I love, but that's not totally the purpose. Where we have matched it up, um, I've tried to match it up and so that things go together, um, meaning that it might be sometimes where we'll study South Asia and the next month India will be something that Marlene has in her rotation, but we can work through that. And I hope that there'll be a resource towards each other um, if that's how you're family is choosing to to present or how, how choosing to teach and go through the curriculum. Okay. I'm going to focus today on a class about world cultures um, and the different dimensions of culture are these 10 that I have here. This and there there are multiple ones, but these are things that I'm going to focus on during the class and pick out probably three, maybe four, two to four that will go about each region. Um, the rotation starts in Asia that I have the, the cycle goes through Asia, um, Africa, back through the Middle East, and eventually in the end of the class, we're going to actually turn the things that we've learned towards the North American culture to kind of take an in, introspective or looking at ourselves approach to all the things that we've learned throughout the class. So um, I just to give you a rough idea of what these things are, identity oh. is, oh, yes. Just a sec. I wanted... I want someone commented that maybe they can't unmute. I was able to, but it might be because our our count is tied. Is can can anyone else unmute just to make sure that if they have questions, they can ask them? We can. Okay. Yeah. So I, I can now only because you unmuted me. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. You, you you gave me you gave me the option. It says I had a note come up. Otherwise, for me to mute. I have when I try to mute unmute, it covers up the whole screen, and I unmute, and then it says press to talk, or it says okay. press when you're done talking. So okay. I'm looking at a big button on the screen. <laughs> All right, and Alan, you also have some things in front of your um, display, your screen share. We can see most of it, but there's some strips that are kind of being covered. Is that better? Is that better? We can still see the blocks, but I think we can see your slides, so it should be OK. OK. okay. Hmm. All right, so Gordy, did you have your question, or did you want to wait until the end? Uh, from the beginning, you mean? Yeah. I just I was just wondering if when you make assignments uh, for us to go out and, and look, try to journalistically look for something like Hindus, are you going to make the assignment, or do we get the pick? You get to pick, but I will certainly help with ideas. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, you, can you all see the words on there? Okay. World, cultures, world cultures is all I see. Okay. 10 dimensions of culture is where I am. Um, there are different parts here, and this is... Uh, kind of the, the norm, but long and short, let me just get into them a little bit. So identity and culture is all about, am I an individual or do I recognize myself as a collective person, a person that's part of a larger group? Authority is the distance between power. Um, the way the culture is set up, is it a low power distance where I can go and talk to anyone or is it a high power distance where there's a lot of layers of bureaucracy or I, the person at the bottom doesn't feel like they can have much power over the top. Um, yeah. Risk. Yep. <laughs> you did not, it's not showing the next slide. Oh, mercy. Okay. I'm going to stop and start over. Okay. So risk, how averse are people to risk? That's an important factor in culture's risk aversion. Achievement. This is competitive versus cooperative. Um, do I, in this element of uh, culture, it's looking at 
um, it's it tends to tie in and that's one of the important things about all these aspects is they tie together but the achievement factor is all about is it working together for consensus or is it working together to get my way and i'll bring as many people with me as i can um time is an important thing that's punctuality versus relationships that's actually what we're going to talk about today uh communication and this is a fascinating one that's always fun that's uh high context versus low context are people direct or the indirect um, lifestyle, being versus doing. Is it more important to be active or is it more important to take the time to enjoy right now? Rules, tight interpretation versus loose interpretation of rules. Uh, universal versus particular. Um, the, do the rules apply to everyone equally or are there some, some times where we make exceptions? Uh, expressiveness. The many cultures are reserved, other cultures are affective or expressive, and they they use their hands and emotions and express who they are by the way they physically move themselves. And then social norms, tight social norms or loose social norms. Um, these are all things that are really fascinating. We'll get into them throughout the course. Uh, they will, I'm not gonna overwhelm us with every single aspect for every single region. We'll talk about a few to get a little more in depth with those. But today, what I'd like to talk about is time and that's punctuality versus relationships. And this is one that oftentimes people uh, first encounter when they're interacting with other cultures. And it's one I think we can all identify with. Um, so here's, and this is where I first learned about this. I was in a class in college, it was intercultural communication. And the professor, the, sorry, the class was a couple hundred, it was probably a hundred, hundred, it was probably 80, 100 people in the class. And it was very diverse. People from all over the world were in this class. It was kind of a theater set up. And one day the, um, the professor had all of us raise our hands. He says, everyone raise your hand. And when you think it's too late to arrive at a job interview, I want you to put your hand down. So everybody puts their hand up in the air. And he says, okay, 20 minutes before a job interview, how, how many of you think that's too late to show up? And everybody kept their hands up. And then he said, okay, 15 minutes before a job interview. How many of you think that's too late? And the Germans put their hands down because they're very punctual and clock oriented and things like that. That wasn't too surprising. Then 10 minutes late, a couple more hands came down, but there's still a fair amount of hands up and, or sorry, not late, I'm sorry, 10 minutes early for a job interview. And then next five minutes early for a job interview. And most of the Americans' hands kind of dropped down and other people with the Anglo culture dropped their hands down. And then he said, on time, how many of you think on time is, is too late for a job interview? Put your hands down. And most of the hands are down, but there was this little pocket of, of people in the class and they still had their hands up. And he says, okay, how about five minutes after the job interview starts? Is that too late for a job interview? And they're like, hands up still. They, he actually he went by five minute increments and at 20 minutes, he's like, okay, so being 20 minutes late to a job interview is not too late for you all. Come and talk to me, tell me about this. And I remember they were from Colombia. They were from Latin America. And one of the, the, the students, he asked them the question, how come that's not too late for a job interview? And the response was, well, if he's otherwise qualified, what difference does it make if he shows up on time? If he can do the job, that's good. Hire him. So this is our dog, Mozzie, in the picture here. He's our, our English cream golden retriever. And he kind of has the... Uh, I'll go when, when it's time to go. Like he's not living on a clock. He's not looking at his watch. Um, and I, that's partly uh, the way he lives, but he's ready to go when it's time. He is all about the relationship. If I say, let's go for a walk, he is up and running. And that's not to say people and humans. I, I want to be careful not to compare people and humans too much, but that's a bit of um, the culture of event time versus clock time. Um, event time is kind of the notion of why would I start a meeting before everyone is there, right? Um, if we don't have everyone that needs to be here, then let's wait until they are here so we can have a, you know, a complete meeting. Versus clock time, which says, hey, the clock here says it's time for us to be started. If people aren't here, then it's their fault and they didn't do a good job planning. The other, another form of talking about this is monochrom, monochrom, monochromatic, sorry, I, 
monochronic versus polychronic. And I'm sorry, I misspelled that on there. Um, and if you look at this, monochronic means doing one thing at a time. That is sort of what you see in this picture with, this is in Japan on the Metro. Um, and sorry to put my wife and son on the spot here, but the, the Japanese people are going to their, they have one thing in mind, they are going home. On the other hand, this polychronic, if you look at my sweet wife, she is a lot more colorful in this picture. She's holding on, she's got her bags, we're finishing a trip, and she's reaching over to our son to make sure he's stable. She's polychronic, she's doing a number of things at the same time. Multitasking is something we talk about, but really the people in a polychronic world are multitaskers. They're not necessarily efficient, but they are good at doing more than one thing at a time and keeping different pots cooking. Um, here's another example of something that uh, we've, we faced recently where time comes to play. Um, I was out of town and my wife told me that uh, our basement started to flood. So when I got home, I cut out the wall and I needed some help with the drywall. So I got um, the contact information from a friend of a guy who, from Latin America, who was ready to, or who um, does drywall. I contacted him and I, his name is Mauro. I talked to him in Spanish and we were in good shape and I thought everything was great for him to come the next day to look at it, but he didn't show up. Um, then I scheduled again. I was like, hey, Mauro, um, Given him a little bit of time and space, I said, Mauro, I, you know, we've got this wall. It's it's dried up now. Um, it, we need to get the insulation back in. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll come tomorrow. And I, I reminded him, I said, well, tomorrow's the 4th of July. Are you sure that's okay? And he said, well, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll come. The next day, the 4th of July, um, came and went and he never showed up. So... There could be a level of frustration with this, and there is. Uh, thankfully, it's not urgent. But um, what's happening here is something that we need to understand, uh, or that, that something that can help us understand what's going on. It's about an in-group. In event-based cultures, it's not so much about the clock telling me what I need to do. It's about the people around me. And I think it was key that the 4th of July was going on. I don't think he really recognized it at the time he was talking to me, but that was a day he could spend with his family. And that was what was important to him was who is in, in his in-group. It's a small group versus a equally committed to everyone group. Um, and that's something that's going on with time in the cultures around the world. Um, another way to look at time in different cultures is short-term versus long-term. Uh, this picture is at uh, Thanksgiving Point in Utah. And one of the things I like about this is short-term versus long-term. The flowers are short-term. They're going to bloom, they're going to be pretty, and they're going to go away. But the trees are long-term. And those long-term things are uh, more, they're going to be steady and there and available. And the interesting thing is, the part, one element of time that different cultures face is, do we want a quick return on, on our investments or are we in it for the long haul? This impacts a lot of work that people do in development. Um, in Haiti, for example, there are so many problems in that country, so many challenges that people face there that it's not going to get fixed with a short term result. Unfortunately, the people from the developed, more developed world, when they invest money, they want to see a quick turnaround on that. They want to see that, hey, we've got a budget for a year and we want to see what happens. But oftentimes those roots don't get sunk in quite as fast as um, the results are demand or as the donors are demanding. And that becomes a, a chronic issue for a lot of processes. If you think about even the US political system, so many times we're looking at what can a congressperson do in a two-year term when the problems are much deeper and much longer term. In another culture, uh, in Singapore, there are laws that are passed that are not even implemented for 10 years. Uh, there was a new health care proposal that was passed in their parliament, and it wasn't going to even take effect for another 10 years. That is the, a long-term look, which tends to be towards the uh, Confucian society. And that's something to keep in mind as we look at the world and as we 
um, see how things go. Societies in Asia, like China and Singapore and Indonesia and other areas in that, uh, that region of the world, they're more long-term oriented. Actually, I take back Indonesia probably isn't, but Singapore and other um, places like that are, Taiwan. So here's, here's an, something I experienced, and this is where geography plays into time a little bit. I was in Abuja, Nigeria, driving, going down the road, and the... Um, traffic signal we got to and this is a, a three lane road three lane road with another go uh, three lanes each way and then three lanes each way and the traffic light stopped like the, the it just went black it wasn't yellow or anything else like that it went black but here's a quick video i hope you guys can see this and get a sense of how chaotic it got all of a sudden oh nope <laughs> sorry i didn't go when i wanted it to here we go So going through an experience like that, I had to really take a pause because we were going, we had, an, we had a reservation to go to dinner and we were going to be late. Thankfully, in Nigeria, people know that being late is just part of the game. Um, it was it was absolute chaos because everyone went at once. There was no way we could control the situation we were in. Compare that, oops, to a place like Japan. Things are orderly. They have bridges. They have all the infrastructure is in place. Where if you go someplace, you can mark the time, and you're probably going to get there within a minute or two. Um, you don't have to make the additional planning for uh, uncontrollable events that may come up. So what I wanna show about this, and this is something interesting that again, plays into the geography of the world, is if you look at how, I'm, I'm speaking of infrastructure here with the roads, but if you look at industrialization, this is a UN map, you can see the dark blue towards the Northern hemisphere plus Australia and kind of over on the right side there towards Japan and, and those places. It's not a perfect match, but as I mentioned before, the idea of a monochronic versus a polychronic culture, the time orientation actually kind of matches up here. I'll go back and forth for a second. But if you look, the blue is monochronic, meaning that these are places where the clock is what matters. The red is places where relationships take primary um, place in someone's life. So again, industrialization and time orientation, they kind of tie together because as a country develops, as it gets, as it becomes industrialized, the clock and efficiency become more and more important. That is something that is a modern phenomena, but it's something to keep in mind if you look at it, most of the world is actually oriented towards relationships. And if we really step back in our own lives, the more we are at work, the more we're concerned about the clock. And the more we're with family and, and being with other people in personal time in everyone's life, we tend to slow down a little bit. We tend to take a little more time to work on the relationships um, than we do when we're on the job, getting paid by the hour, et cetera, et cetera. And that's one of the big differences in the developed world versus the developing world um, is that the clock starts to play more of a role in our lives. So working together, this is St. Paul's Cathedral. And I think it's really interesting. You've got kind of everything pulled together. And I want to talk about it just for a minute. And how do we get along? How do we make things work with someone like Mauro, who didn't show up to help me with initially it felt like an emergency. One thing I like about the, this, uh, this is when I visited St. Paul's Cathedral in London. This is an old building, like it's huge, it's enormous. And it's, it's been there for hundreds of years. It's gonna stay there for hundreds of years. It's long-term, but they also have a clock right there that measures minute by minute, every hour that's passing by. 
it's kind of both the relationship with the time it's it has a presence in the relationship with people going in and out being at church worshiping but it also touches on the time as people walk by on the street as they go from their jobs so how do we apply principles what principles can we apply to make the differences we face with time one thing i have to think about with mauro i recognize that maybe he hadn't thought that the next day was the 4th of July and he'd have the day off and be able to spend some time with his family. On the flip side of that, one of the most important things because of the relationship orientation in these polychronic places or relationship oriented places, if we if if someone that comes from a more clock oriented culture wants to get someone from a more relationship oriented culture to help out in the ways that we need it and i'm saying we because i come from a time oriented culture expressing what's going on is one of the most important things if our basement had been flooding and i had told mauro i really need you now i think he either would have come and helped because he would have understood the urgency of the situation or um, made it clear that he wasn't going to be able to make it the same thing holds true with a deadline when people from different cultures are working on a deadline for something, we need to express, coming from a, a clock-oriented culture, we need to express how the, there are real consequences for us if we don't get something done in time. And if someone from a relationship-oriented culture can sense that there's going to be harm to me for not getting something done on time, they tend to adjust for that. They tend to give a little bit more space for that. It's important not to do these have these conversations in the moment um, if we can help it, but to have a, uh, an, a quiet moment to talk to the person and express what's going on, whether it's at work, at school, or even in a relationship. Um, there's a story about going to the golf course and uh, a Brazilian being late. The, the Brazilian was home with his family because that's his in-group. That's his small group that matters. But it's wise to take a moment and express to that, uh, that person, hey, listen, golf courses run on time. And if we're late, we miss out. And that's not something that we want to do if we're, we want to get together to play golf. Um, there are lots of things we can do. But as I mentioned also, um, having a little bit of grace with each other and under, giving each other a chance to express where they're coming from and listening is important. Um, the calm approach is probably one of the best things we can do if we really need something done to make sure it sinks in, that it's, that it's clear, but also to understand that sometimes we're not, or the biggest thing is we're not going to change an entire culture or something that's ingrained in someone in either direction. So we need to be patient with one another as we interact with people from different cultures. So... Um, but it is possible, as shown here in the St. Paul's Cathedral, because it's both something that's right now telling me the time and also long last, um, as expressed by the building and its presence there for so many, so many years. Okay, that's actually the end of my presentation today, and I welcome questions about that or about um, the class more broadly. I have a question on the, the example that you used. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I see a conflict not only between time and relationship, but if somebody says, I'll be there tomorrow, even if it is the 4th of July, and he doesn't show up and he doesn't call you, he's lied to me. There's a little more than just relationship or timing here. Okay. So if he says, well, I'll be there to the, the following day if you call him, but I shouldn't have to call him. He said he'd be here. So yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a functionality there that doesn't work. If uh, I, I understand, you know, he, he could have called you and said, I, I forgot that it was the, about the 4th of July and I need to be with my family, if that's all right. But if he didn't call, that didn't show up, to me, he's lied to me. So that's, he's crossed over the line between a relationship and 
the monochromat not being on time. He just lost his job for me. Yeah. Oh, and see, that's part of the thing is that that's that's it's, you know, as my um, as my Chinese professor told me, the more universal you believe something is, the more likely it is rooted in your own culture. Mm -hmm. This applies in, in many different ways, but that's one of the things that is it's it's really challenging. And that's part of where cultures do come together. How do we interact? Because. I mean, it gets into the other elements of uh, particularist versus universalist. Are things universal and the same for everyone? Or is it in this little group that it matters? And we all do it to certain levels. And especially when we get more to the personal side of our lives, it tends to be that um, we there are things that, that change based on which group we're with and how big our in-group is. So there's there's a lot more to that. And I think you, I mean, you're really onto something. And that's something that's uh that's coming from a more universalist perspective on how things work. But we do make exceptions when someone is in a car accident and oh, doesn't yeah. show up on time and they don't communicate sure. with you. it depends on the circumstance. Yeah. And that's those are the type of things that we have to consider what is that big deal to them that kept the, kept them from uh, from the situation or what they committed to of course yeah okay other questions i will be putting out um i'm, I'm going to turn on the uh the syllabus for the beginning of the class well i'll put out there um i am going to ask that the students buy an atlas um i'm looking at two and i will make a final decision here this week um, so that we can refer to the same book as we go through. Um, and there's some links. Also, I'm curious of where students are before the start of the, the class. I'm going to send out a request to um, express interest in countries they want to learn more about so I can know where there's some interest to dig a little bit deeper as I present and as we talk. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a fun course to talk about these things. And as we get to know one another, I think there's gonna be more and more, um, we'll, we'll find more of what we want to focus on, but also I don't want anybody to be shy to let me know um, where things where things are and how their interest level in what we're doing. So, all right. I look forward to hearing more from you and uh, hopefully you can, join me for the class. Thanks, Mr. Powell. Really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you for joining.